members of the mountaineering club Extreme are preparing for yet another ascent. Yuri Virbitsky was part of the club for almost a decade, taking on some of the most difficult climbs. He smiled almost all the time. He enjoyed life. I don't recall ever seeing him sad. Virbitsky's friend, Konstantin, recalled an expedition in the Caucasus Mountains where Yuri fell off a rock and broke his leg. His endurance and willpower left a lasting impression. He rode his bike to the hospital and even while his leg healed, it was hard for him to even walk, but he chose to ride his bike. That's how determined he was to get back in shape and go mountain climbing again. Yuri's other connection to the mountains lied in his professional activity as a researcher. At the Geophysics Institute, he developed a system that simulated seismological activity all across the planet. We still cannot find a replacement for him. He was a unique programmer. I do not know if there is anyone else anywhere in seismology capable of performing such tasks. Thanks to him, everything here is automated. While Verbitsky published his geophysics dissertation, he never got around to receiving his degree. As tensions during the Euromaidan revolution intensified, Verbitsky chose to join the protests, even though he wasn't very political. Yuri was really concerned about it all. He felt sorry for the people who stayed out there in the cult 24-7, and he believed that the government was in the wrong. He had a strong sense of justice. He was Mr. Perfect and always used to say that conflicts should be resolved peacefully and that aggression should be avoided. He believed that you can always get your point across by just talking to someone. On January 19, 2014, during clashes with riot police on Hrushevskoho Street in central Kiev, Yuri Verbitsky was shot in the eye. Activist Ihor Lutsenko took him to the hospital. The last time we spoke, he was walking on Hrushchatek Street to meet Ihor Lutsenko. He said he was already getting into the car. Pretty much as soon as we entered the hospital, about 10 men barged in. He was dragged out right from doctor's office during an exam. I was just outside the doctor's office and was the first to be taken. Yuri Verbitsky and Ihor Lutsenko were then driven in an unknown direction. They ended up in the woods outside Kiev, where they were tortured and interrogated about their support of the Euromaidan. They were clearly prejudiced towards him, more so than towards me, because he was from Lviv. I am a Kiev native, and for them, that made a difference. They saw Yuri as a Bandera-worshipping radical who came here from Halichina to riot, although, in reality, he wasn't like that at all. After their interrogation in the forest with bags on their heads, they were taken to what looked like a garbage dump, where the beatings continued, Ihor says. After that, they were taken in separate cars. Ihor was dropped off in the middle of a snowy field outside Kiev. Severely beaten, he remembers walking several kilometers to find a residential area, to seek for help and to survive. Yuri Verbitsky didn't make it. In the place where Verbitsky's body was found, the residents of the nearby village Nidin put up this memorial. The village is around one kilometer away, but getting there on a cold winter night through snow drifts proved to be an impossible task. The activist was savagely beaten. He had broken ribs and legs. Two men were arrested on suspicion of murder of Yuri Verbitsky. The case is still awaiting trial. Reported by Evgenia Burda, UATV.